Yo, what's up guys? It's Snots here back with another video and today I want to hit on a hitting tips video. Recently I uploaded a video that showed all of my PCI settings and it seemed to do pretty well. So I figured it made sense to get a hitting tips video out there. Uh, that previous video basically just went over the basics and all the best settings to have when you're at the plate for your PCI, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm gonna go over those settings again real quick here. It's just gonna be quick and easy. Uh, I always hit on hitting difficulty Hall of Fame. It's up to you guys. You can do All Star if you want, if you're in that veteran difficulty on ranked seasons. What I recommend doing when it comes to difficulty is going on one step higher than what you're at in ranked seasons. So if you're currently playing on veteran in ranked seasons, play on All Star. If you're currently playing on All Star, do Hall of Fame, so on and so forth. And this method will also show. A little bit further into our hitting tips video but i will get into that later hitting view i recommend strike zone medium in play offense uh hitting interfaces zone again if you guys are trying to get a lot of details on this make sure you're checking out that other video i will put that into the description pci anchor i have that off i don't like pci anchor you guys might like it but i don't like it at all so i keep it off my pci center is diamonds PCI inner is basic, no PCI outer. PCI color is yellow. And then my PCI transparency is at 60%. A lot of this is all preference guys. So make sure you pick what you're comfortable with. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I picked this because I've been using these PCI settings for the last three years and I haven't changed it. So I've gotten used to it. I recommend doing that as well. Once you find a PCI and you like it, stick with it. Don't switch it all the time. You're going to have slumps, so just changing a PCI just by a little bit is not going to change everything. So stick with what you have and keep running with it. The longer you keep it around, the more comfortable you'll get and you'll like it better. Now I'm going to jump into custom practice just because I want to talk a lot and talk to you guys about my approaches and how I do things. But when it comes to practice, I am not like all these other creators. I don't recommend doing practice in practice mode because it's a waste of time a lot of us are busy a lot of us have jobs out there and we don't have time to be sitting in here playing practice mode you know we want to make sure that we're getting as most xp as possible to grind these programs out so i recommend if you're in a slump or you're trying to get warmed up or you're just trying to get you know practice your hitting tips skills in general practicing in many seasons many seasons will help you with xp you get a lot of rewards in there and it's live situations and live pitching against pitchers that you're going to see in diamond dynasty all practice mode is is against the ai and just pitchers that aren't even in diamond dynasty and i don't know maybe it's just me if you like practice mode you can go ahead and do it all you want uh, i'm just trying to save you guys some time and use your time wisely I recommend doing practice in mini season. We will do that in this video, but I just want to go into practice mode just so we can do some talking. Okay, so when it comes to uh, hitting tips and my approach that I use, I'm not going to be doing any swings right now. I just want you guys to listen. Um, when I come up to the plate, I'm going to treat my at bat like a real life at bat. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys out here played a lot of baseball growing up. If you did not, uh, just go ahead and listen to what I'm saying and try to put it into the real game. So when we're coming up to the plate, right, it's a zero zero count and we're starting off the game. We're not going to be coming out swinging right off the rip, are we? No, we're going to come out, look at our pitcher, see what his release is like, see what kind of pitches he's throwing, get a feel for our pitcher. I always use the first inning just for that. I don't do a lot of swinging in the first inning, to be honest with you, unless it's right in the spot that I want it to be. So the approach that I use is is I'm only looking for my pitch. In the first inning, I recommend taking the first pitch every single time so you can start to get his pitch count up and you know start to get that energy bar going down slowly but surely. If you come out swinging and you get three pitches and three outs, the pitcher has the upper hand here and you're not you know you're just not getting ahead of the game. If you're coming out and you know you're taking pitches and driving that pitch count up a little bit it's gonna drive your opponent a little bit crazy even if you don't have a good eye your opponent is going to think that you are a very patient batter and he's going to be thinking that you're gonna be a tough opponent 
people don't like pitching up against players like that people that have good eyes and I, I know i don't if i play a guy that's not swinging the bat at all it, it's making you pitch to him you know you have no choice you have to come to the batter make you know make the pitcher come to you don't come to them do not help them out with swinging at pitches outside of the zone now when it comes to an approach right uh you know we're getting a little bit further into the game you know we're going into the second inning now right what i like to do is start my pci up a little bit so see watch what i'm doing here i'm gonna keep my pci up just a tad not not too high we're not going to be keeping the pci way up here nothing like that you don't want your analog stick to be sitting up against you know the walls of your controller just barely bring it up right so the reason why i do that is because that is my sweet spot right if i have zero strikes one strike not two strikes i'm only swinging the bat if the ball is in that zone now if it's if it's not i'm not swinging the bat i don't care if the ball's down here if it's perfectly located exactly where he just pitched it right there it is a strike but the odds of you getting a good hit out of that are very slim if you're swinging at something that's outside of the zone you're probably going to be grounding out something like that uh now if we only swing at high pitches and only look for pitches in that zone probability to hit a home run is pretty high uh, I noticed that in this game, if you make good contact and you time up high pitches the right way, just like that, you have a high probability of hitting a home run. Even when the ball is in the zone and your PCI is not even all the way on it, you still have a pretty good chance of getting a good hit out of it. So don't worry about, you know, getting strikes early in the count. If that happens, it happens. But most of the time, they're going to try to get you to chase and as long as you're not swinging at those pitches you're good so zero strikes one strike you're going to only look for pitches that are high in the zone and you want to continuously say that in your head because you're gonna chase pitches it's gonna happen so make sure you're trying to only swing at high pitches and when you use this approach your pitcher his uh, pitch count is going to go up very quick and his energy bar and maybe even his confidence is going to go down as well now that's another thing to keep in mind if your pitcher throws a ball inside the zone and it is a strike and you don't swing, his confidence bar does go up a little bit, but it does not go up as much as if you were to chase the ball and swing and miss. It's actually a substantial difference. So if you swing and miss, his confidence bar goes up a lot. So you want to make sure that you're limiting that as much as you can by only swinging at pitches that you like. Now, another thing that I recommend doing, you guys will notice here that I am spinning my PCI like crazy. Um, that mine might be a little bit over the top, but this is my timing mechanism. Uh, again, coming back to real life, if you guys come up to the plate, you're, you know, you're moving. You're not just standing there stagnant like this PCI is. If you do this, you're going to get a little stiff and your uh, PCI movement isn't going to be the best. So you want to be warm and ready to go. Now, once I start cheating that PCI up a little bit, is when I uh, see his leg go up. So I'll do a couple spins, usually about two or three. I see his leg go up, and that's when I start to cheat my PCI up a little bit. So spinny, spinny, up. There we go. And that's a really good timing mechanism as well. And again, this is coming back to real life. These are things that you do in real life. So, you know, maybe the spin in circles is a little too much. If you're comfortable with just flicking your PCI to the left a little bit, to the right, whatever it may be, just keep it moving and keep your thumb warmed up and ready to go. So last but not least, if you guys are behind on your fastball, that is the only time that I recommend jumping into practice mode and you don't even have to do it for very long. Good thing about practice mode is you can hop in here and select a certain pitch whatever it may be or select a certain zone so on and so forth if you're looking to time up a fastball and you're not on time i do recommend going into practice mode for just a little bit and just keep hitting in here until your swing timing is consistently at good or perfect okay so now this is where the practicing comes into play i gave you my uh approach for you guys you want to use this approach as much as you can. Now, if you don't like high pitches, you can always just look for inside pitches. And I know a lot of people out there 
uh, use that same uh, approach, but they're only looking for inside pitches. That's fine. If you guys only like inside pitches and that's your favorite pitch, so be it. Same with outside pitches. I don't recommend outside pitches though because those balls normally don't carry out. You normally don't hit those very hard. Those are usually the ones that you have a perfect perfect and it ends up getting caught. So when it comes to practicing, this is what I recommend doing. Taking your uh, Diamond Dynasty team that you plan on using in ranked seasons in that day and going to many seasons. All right, so as you can see here, I'm 8-0 right now, and these games are simply just from getting warmed up. I have not grinded many seasons at all. I just use many seasons as a practice mode or you know, something to get me warmed up. Again, this is great to use this because it's not pointless time being wasted. Again, we're all busy people out there and we wanna use our time wisely, right? So I use many seasons because you can get XP, you can get a lot of rewards in here, as you can see. And uh, yeah, it just it just makes more sense. And I'm glad that they brought many seasons into this game this year because it's very useful in my opinion. So again, back to the difficulty thing that I recommend. And when you click on your game, you're gonna get a uh, option here to pick a difficulty. So if you're currently on All-Star, right? Which is usually from, man, I can't remember, but I know it goes all the way up to 700. It's the All-Star division all the way up to 700, which is division series division. That is all all-star if you're in that uh category which most people are i recommend practicing in many seasons against hall of fame right if you're new out here and you're playing on veteran or even you're starting out in the beginning spring training ranks i recommend doing either veteran or all-star now if you're in that you know kind of grace period where you're just starting out but you're kind of doing well in spring training start an all-star you know, get the timing down. And when you go in here and warm up in many seasons and go against this difficulty, when you hop into the ranked seasons, Mark, you will be ready to go. And the pitch speeds won't look completely different to you. And you'll be, you'll have an advantage. You'll, most people don't warm up before they jump into games. So you'll be ready to go. So for me, I'm at 14 and three right now as my record. And I'm just under 600 in my rating. So I'm playing on all-star, but for this game, I'm gonna go on Hall of Fame. I'll get warmed up and I'm ready to go. When you jump in here, you wanna make sure that you're selecting the stadium that you normally play on. I always play on Ship It. Now in this gameplay, I'm going to be telling you exactly what's going on in my mind. And this is exactly what I think of when I'm in a live ranked game. And this is exactly what goes on. And this is how you guys should be doing it in a real game. All right, so the first inning is over. Our first batter will be my cap. We are lefty versus a righty. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm thinking each pitch. So, oh, oh, count. I'm only looking for high pitches in my spot. I'm, I was gonna take there anyways, just so I can get an idea of Jacob deGrom's release. And I'm gonna take again, just so I can get an idea. And look at that, we're already ahead, 2-0. I am only swinging if I get a fastball high pitch. Look at that, 3-0, we're way ahead in the count. 3-0 count. I don't recommend swinging at all, even if it's right down the middle, which it probably will be. Look at that. Now we're driving the pitch count up. This is what we wanna do. We're in a good position here. Three, one count. I'm probably not even gonna swing again. We get a walk. Look at that. Right off the rip, right here in rank seasons, people are gonna notice that you are a patient hitter and they're going to be uncomfortable on the mound. So there we go. Inside pitch, it was a strike, but it wasn't in our zone. There we go. See, I'm keeping warm and I'm cheating our PCI up a little bit. I don't know why I swung at that. Again, you're going to chase. All right, looking for a high pitch. We had two strikes. We protected there. We made pretty good contact, but our PCI was not on and we did not time that up the best. But there we go. We're in the dot bottom of the first inning. He's already at eight pitches. We're sitting good. Oh, oh, count. We're looking for something high. Here we go. All right, he thinks I'm stealing. I'm not doing that. All right, 1-0 count. Only want that high pitch. All right, that was a strike, but good take. If I swung at that and hit that, I was probably gonna ground out. All right, we went and chased that one a little bit. It was a good hit, but didn't get through the hole. It was a good play by the first baseman. All right, so you guys, this is on Hall of Fame. Just to kind of remind you guys, the whole point of this is to get an idea, get warmed up, and 
just get ready for rank season get all of our timing down and our pci ready to go so i didn't get anything on that first inning but here we go inning number two we're only looking for high pitches and he put in Rossiel Iglesias. This is going to be a guy that you're going to see a lot. Probably all year long. So that's good. All right. 2-0 count. Not in our zone. He is not putting it in our zone. So keep it high. It was a good throw. But not where I wanted it to be. Another pitch he threw. And we did not swing. There we go. High pitch. But it was out of the zone. You can still get a hold of those. And hit a lot of home runs with those. So. All right, so it was a high pitch. We got good contact. We were a little bit early, but that's okay. You want to make sure that you're early. Being late, that means you are way off. If you're early on balls, that is a good sign. All right, so he threw us a high inside fastball. I like those pitches, so that was a good swing. All right, I, ooh, that was a outside fastball, one and one. All right, cool. That was a good spot, good hit, and Teoscar gets a home run. Now, that wasn't very high, but it was right down the middle. Usually, if I see something coming out of the right down the middle, I'm hitting that ball out. All right, we're up one nothing. We got a righty, CJ Crone up. Not swinging at that one. Only looking for high pitches, fellas. All right, that was a nice high slider that was hung, but we were way too early. Good contact. PCI was kind of on it, but uh, we get out. Recognizing good pitches and we're only swinging at high pitches. That is what's good because eventually you will get a hold of one like we did with T Oscar. All right, there it was. Not good contact, but it's okay. You can't get discouraged when you go to play mini seasons because you're playing on a higher difficulty than what you're used to. So as long as your timing is good, you're hitting the ball hard you're fine so i'm gonna go ahead and finish this game out and then we'll hop into practice mode and we'll talk about a few more things okay cool so we end up getting the win i don't hit the best in this game but again the whole point of this was to show you guys that mini seasons is way better to practice and i wanted to give you guys an idea of what's going on in my head while these pitches are coming in sometimes you know this might sound a little crazy you need to talk to yourself and talk you through these at bats you want to keep constantly thinking in your head hey only swing at your pitch don't be chasing constantly keep that in your head and constantly keep using the same approach over and over and over and as you use this approach you know things will get easier for you and you'll get more comfortable with this approach and you'll drive pitchers crazy with not swinging at pitches because pitchers hate that so i'm back in practice mode here just because i want to talk about a few more things um couple things that i recommend maybe investing in to kind of make you better at the game and make gaming overall a lot better for you not even just for mlb this show just for everything in general um what i recommend doing is getting a uh not laptop a monitor when you get a chance monitors in my opinion are a game changer when it comes to uh gaming and especially playing mlb the show now, for me, a long time ago, around like MLB The Show 19 and 18, I played on a 60-inch TV, and I was still decent at the game, but I was nowhere where I'm at now, uh, competing for a World Series all the time and so on and so forth. I was nowhere close. Uh, my, my game really changed when I got a monitor. The reason why it's way better is, uh, yeah, the quality is a little bit better on a TV, but you've got a lot less to look at when you're on a monitor. Um, for instance, on this 60 inch TV, I had to damn near turn my head just to uh, look at something else on the other side of the screen. With a monitor, it's right there in front of you and you just barely have to move your eyes. And for hitting, it is great, especially with strike zone because you've got a much smaller spot that you have to uh, watch. Also, another thing that I recommend, which costs a little bit of money, they're usually about 12 bucks, is get a set of control freaks. Control freaks are a little attachment that goes on top of your analog sticks on your controller. Uh, this is especially needed for the PlayStation controllers. 
I don't know if it's just because uh, you know I've been on Xbox my entire life, but the PlayStation controllers are very slippery and sticks are very short and I just don't like the feel of them. I use my control freaks on my Xbox controller because even with the Xbox controllers, the analog sticks, well, the standard ones are not the best. The control freaks are perfect for this. Uh, gives you a little more range of motion with your analog stick. It's more comfortable once you get used to it. But I noticed when I was using these control freaks, I had a lot more range of motion. I was able to get down to pitches that were a little bit lower, much faster than what I did before. And like I said, you can also use these in other video games as well, and it'll improve pretty much everything. If you get those, they come with one uh, longer control freak stick and one that's shorter. I use the shorter one because the longer one gives me way too much range of motion and I kind of overstimulate my PCI with that. But yeah, I recommend getting the smaller ones, which is only about 12 bucks. It's probably between 12 to 20 right now. But out of those two, I do recommend getting the Control Freaks first if you cannot afford a monitor right now that is completely understandable. Uh, you know, it's not a big deal. But yeah, when you can, you know, whenever Christmas comes around maybe or something like that, ask for a monitor. And you know, they're not really that expensive. Mine was right around 100 bucks. Um, it, it's it's much it's a much better experience with gaming overall. It's not just MLB the show, you know, pretty much everything in general. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Brief summary. Um, treat every at bat like it's alive at bat in real life. Don't come out here swinging at every single bat. If you come out here and you're patient, even if you can't locate the ball very well and you're still coming out here and you're not swinging, your opponent is going to think that you are a very picky uh, batter and he's he's gonna have to come to you eventually and it's going to make his day a lot harder make sure you're coming up to the plate only looking for your pitches until you get two strikes and you know again that's gonna drive up the pitch count and make your pitcher tired and don't practice in practice mode if you want to you can but for me I'm a busy guy I do YouTube and I have a full-time job as well I'm not trying to sit here and sit in practice mode for no reason at all. If you're in many seasons, you can change the difficulty to what you want. And you're also facing up against Diamond Dynasty players that you will actually face in ranked seasons. Like, for instance, in the game that we showed, we didn't hit very well, but we faced parallel for Jacob deGrom. And you guys are going to see a lot of that soon. So I was also in Hall of Fame mode. And once I jump into ranked seasons, I'll be on all star. I'm going to feel comfortable and my timing is going to be good and I'm going to be ready to go. That's going to be it for this video. I hope these tips help you guys out. If you have any questions, shoot a comment down below. I promise you I will get back to you. I hope this helped you guys out. If it did, please consider subscribing to the channel and throw a like on the video. I appreciate all the support so far. We're having a lot of fun with this game. I'm out of here, guys. Peace.